Welcome back everyone. I just want to start by saying I'm going to talk about um, this is part of a series on being drawn upward. Uh, this part I'm calling ammo packs. It's what we, I, I've titled what we have been given. And I'm going to be talking about, like I said, ammo packs. I know that's not anything that's in the Bible, but um, today I'm going to be, there's three things I'm going to go through with you over the next couple of weeks. But today I want to talk about two, what I refer as ammo packs. One of them uh, I'll cover uh, fairly quickly and that is rejoicing and the second one I want to cover is is about uh, Thanksgiving and so I want to go through these two uh, ammo packs and explain the importance of them but all these ammo packs have to do uh, with things that we carry with us all the time and we have access to these activities all the time to bring us into the presence of the Lord Now, whether we use them is up to us but they have great purposes and we need to realize these are available to us so we can use them and take us into his presence to receive direction and so forth. Uh, I'm going to start with a, an example out of the Old Testament. And David was a person who actually was using these ammo packs. And I'm going to just read this out of uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 15 or chapter 5, 22 through 25. Uh, this is about a battle that David was about to go into. It says, Then the Philistines went up once again and, and deployed themselves <clears throat> in the valley of Rephraim. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, and he said, You shall not go up, but circle round behind them, come up from the front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly, for then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines, and David did so. So the Lord commanded him, as the Lord commanded him, and he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. So the reason I wanted to read this is because David inquired of the Lord, and then the Lord spoke to him. Uh, for David to be able to do this, to inquire of the Lord, and in, in the moment for God to speak to him, he had to be developing a relationship with the Lord to hear his voice and to get direction in, in the moment of when he was getting ready to attack someone. And so he, he did this, and he, did, and he was able to accomplish this because he had on an ammo pack <clears throat> that he had learned over the years of being with the Lord that he, he developed some ways to have access to the presence of God to receive direction or strategies. So that's what I want to cover today. The first ammo pack I want, to, I want to touch upon is rejoicing. Now these are going to seem like simple activities, but they are very important things. These, these are uh, activities that lead to tremendous spiritual ramifications. And so we must understand this. All right, so rejoicing, we are commanded to rejoice. It is a decision that we must make. It is, it's an activity that we must participate in. We must decide to do it whether we feel like it or not. And when we begin to rejoice or we begin to use these ammo packs, I'll touch upon three of them, our soul begins to line up with God's desires. It helps us to identify the blessings of God. It moves us from a destructive state into a place of being in God's graces. I want to read to you Psalms, uh, chapter 34, 1 through 4. It says, at, I will extol the Lord at all times. The, the praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the, in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So we see the key word I want to focus in on here is he rejoiced. Now again, rejoicing, like the other ammo packs I'm going to go through, is not something that is, it's, it's a decision you must make with your will. You always don't feel like rejoicing, but we are commanded to rejoice. Um, what, rejoicing is actually the same thing to do before God. It's the right thing. It brings us into the presence of the Lord. When you look up the word rejoice, it means to, to be happy, to celebrate. Now, knowing the definition of this, we know we're in, we're, we are in circumstances at times where it's not that. 
It's difficult. It's, it's, uh, it can be an adverse situation. But we're commanded to rejoice. In other words, we're commanded to celebrate. We're commanded to be happy in the midst of turmoil. And when we choose to do that, all of a sudden we are lining ourselves up with God's will. We're lining ourselves up for blessing to come our way when we begin to rejoice. So rejoicing, it breaks off the influence of this world and removes us from the destructive nature of the enemy into the very presence of God. Now that's the first ammo pack. And these activities I'm going to go through are a means of ministering to the Lord and then to his people. I just want to emphasize that when we, we must learn to minister to the Lord. And it's only after we've learned to minister to the Lord are we able to minister to God's people. Many times people, Christians, get that they do the last part. They want to minister to people without ministering to the Lord. We have it backwards when we do that. If we cannot minister to the Lord, how, can, how on earth can we minister to people? All right, the second ammo pack is thanksgiving. Like I said, these are things you probably have heard of, things you've been practicing. Uh, but we need to make these, these ammo packs, rejoicing and now thanksgiving, into lifestyles. Um, so in, in my own personal experience, I, I met the Lord many, many years ago, and it was ingrained to in me. I started reading books, and I started hearing teachings on thanksgiving, and I just started practicing it. I didn't realize the benefits I was receiving from it until later on in life. I want to read to you 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. This has to do with, with uh, giving thanks. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. When we give thanks, it positions us, it establishes us to be in an intimate relationship with the Lord. It's very important. We are actually setting a, 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 off to the side these activities which bring us closer to God. So what is the activity we're setting apart? Thanksgiving. We are going to offer up thanksgiving unto the Lord because he always deserves to receive that. Now, rejoicing, praise, and thanksgiving are all things that we can do at any time we feel like it. And what, the, what these activities do, they attract heaven to us. And we need that when we get into difficult times. These activities actually draw us upward. They draw us into the presence of the Lord, whereby we can receive help in our time of need. And when we do these activities, in this case, when we're giving thanks, we're actually lining ourselves up with the truth. We are, we are actually agreeing with the truth for our circumstance. And these activities, in these activities, we are actually doing the will of God. So many times I hear people say, well, what, what is the will of God? Well, I can say simply today, the will of God is to give thanks in every situation. For this is, like I says, this is his will. So we have to learn to do these things. And I want to emphasize, it is something we have to learn. We have to set these, these activities into action in our lives. We have to develop these activities as, as a habit in our lives. To, to always know when things come our way to, to turn and not give way to the destructive thing that's coming our way. But in turn, we turn to the Lord in, in rejoicing and now giving thanks. The giving of thanks... We give thanks to someone who's greater than ourselves. This is something we most of us probably learn through activity, through difficulties. But we, we, as you walk with the Lord, you begin to realize when we try to handle a situation on our own, almost always ends up being unsuccessful. So we, we, have, we learn to give thanks. And who do we give thanks to? Somebody that's greater than ourselves. Somebody, and, may, and namely that's Jesus himself. We learn to give thanks for, to him because we found out without his help, we, we mess up and we make the wrong decisions and we, as a result, we suffer for it. Um, to give thanks requ requires an attitude of humility. The giving thanks is a proper way of honoring God for all the things he brings our way. Um, and it shows that it shows God that we understand when we give thanks that he act, we're actually trusting him. We are really saying we give thanks. Lord, I don't know how I handle the situation, but I know that you, you monitor all things. You're in control of all things. Therefore, I give you thanks. 
Now we also know that all good and perfect things come from above. They, they, everything that comes from God is good. God does not dish out difficult, um, things that are not good. He, he, God is not out after to cause harm to us. If harm comes our way, it's not God get bringing harm our way. Um, so good things he'll bring to us and through thanksgiving, he wants to prosper us. He wants to prosper his people. He, and by giving thanks to him, we prosper. And as a result of that, people begin to be attracted to us. And people are drawn close to us through this relationship we have by practicing thanksgiving. Um, so we must have an attitude of humility whereby we seek the giver of life. And, he, and we end up fulfilling our own destiny. The giving of thanks actually brings us into a connection with God. It sets us up to where we are drawing closer to God by giving thanks. It's a very important issue. I want to read some an, another scripture. This is in Romans 1, verses 18 through 21. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were they thankful, but became futile in the thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. See, when we give thanks, we're actually acknowledging the truth about God for ourselves. This results in us being set free. Uh, when we give thanks, it puts us in the right frame of mind. It, get, it puts us where we can actually receive things from God. And, and it's during worship that that's an activity we can do where we give thanks to God. And when, when we're in worship, revelation begins to flow. Because we're in this mindset of giving thanks, we are able to receive revelation. We are able to receive godly decisions. We receive strategies, uh, direction for our lives when we're, when we're giving thanks in worship. It is in his presence and through thanksgiving that we, that we come into, his, into a place of receiving these things. Now, when we do not give thanks and we do not give glory to God, we cut ourselves off from God. And that's so easy to do. I mean, you, you, you got things going on in your life. You may, have, you may have pressure coming in. You have to make some big decisions. You, be, you, become, uh, you may become distraught. The best thing to do when you sense that you're, you don't know what to do, you sense you're getting confused, you don't have the direction, it's not clear to you, then that's the time to get off and begin to give thanks and begin to worship the Lord. Because through that, through that environment of giving thanks, strategies from heaven begin to flow your way and, he, and, you'll, and you'll be able to make godly decisions. Um, when, we don't, when we don't give thanks, our hearts get darkened and truth is not in us as a result. Uh, but on the other hand, when we give glory and thanks to God, and which is not hard, it's an easy thing to do, we, we receive the responses from God, but that cannot happen when we're not giving thanks. It's that... It's that amazing. When we don't give thanks, the truth does not come to us. Our hearts become darkened and our minds become futile, as it says in that scripture. With our hearts darkened, we no longer are able to discern spiritual matters. Uh, this, the pers uh, this person in a worship time will not be able to relate to those that are worshiping, those that are passionate. To when, when you're standing beside somebody and one is giving thanks, and that happens especially in times of worship, the person that's standing right next to him is not giving thanks. That person cannot relate to the one that is, as they would see, it's over the top and giving thanks to God. And as a result, when you don't give thanks, your life, when it says, it says futile, it actually means to be purposeless. People lose their purpose. They lose their direction in life just simply from not giving thanks to God. Now, when, we're, when we do not give thanks, it cuts, it cuts us off from God's purposes. This is devastating. That's how important it is to give thanks to God. 
we lose our purpose and it makes our decisions outside of God's will. And as a result, we suffer for it. So many times, this activity, again, which is simple, if we do not practice it, it, we slowly get cut off from God's purposes because we're not acknowledging him and we're not, we don't have the humility in our lives to acknowledge God in the midst of all situations. And instead, what we tend to do is just make decisions on our own. Now, when you read through the chapter, Romans 1, you find that that chapter has so much, uh, it shows so much perversion and darken, it shows darkened hearts because of the lack of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving provides stability in our lives. When adverse circumstances come our way uh, and we give thanks, it, we focus on the truth and it brings us back into heaven's reality. Now I want to read another uh, scripture. This is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. It says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, hearing their own, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, these verses here show the power, again, of thanksgiving. Eating of foods. This, this is a big subject back then that was being addressed by Paul, and that was the eating of foods being offered to idols. A lot of the Christians at that time didn't feel comfortable in eating this food. So Paul addressed this situation, but he never debunked the idea about, uh, about not eating the food. He just, he came at it from a different direction. He pointed to it. He, he made reference to Thanksgiving and sanctification and, and, and the reference to food be, that was offered to idols, whether they could eat or not. He showed that the combining of Thanksgiving with the word and prayer is powerful enough to deauthorize the idol uh, uh, dedication, that that was stronger than the food that had been offered to idols. And there, therefore, it states they could receive with thanksgiving the word of prayer and, and, and sanctify it where it had no effect on them. Now, in, in the Old Testament, when they, they used the utensils in the tabernacle, they would put blood on them from animals. In the New Testament, we are covered by the blood instead of animals of Jesus himself. And that sanctifies us for, for, the, for the service of the Lord. But it's much more powerful than that. Now, we are the vessels who are being sanctified by the blood of Jesus, and that in itself is tremendous. But it goes beyond that. Anything that the, anything that the Lord does, he does in us. And what happens in us eventually is manifested outside of us. So through thanksgiving, prayer, and the word of God, what this happened, and not only does it sanctify us for the service of the Lord, but it also allows the life, the power and the love flow through us and to transform us into his very image. Now that's, that's powerful. In 2 Corinthians 3.18 it says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So when we spend time in the presence of the Lord, we must realize that we are being transformed. In my life, in, in my in my life, I've gotten in the habit of spending uh, about every two three weeks about one about two hours with other people in the presence of God, and we worship, and it's I call it extended worship. And as we worship, we realize that the glory of God comes down, the presence of God comes down upon us, and we begin to be transformed. How? In His very image, we become. We are becoming like the one we're worshiping, like Jesus Himself, through this, through this activity. All right. Um, so anyway, and this, the unclean food here was sanctified, so they could go ahead and eat it with uh, and giving thanks to God. Now, now it's very important we understand the truth goes. This truth goes beyond the unclean food. It extends into our very situation of life. The giving of thanks alters adverse situations. So when things come our way, difficulties, 
adversity, uh, pressure, anxiety. These are times. These are these are times we need to take note, because these things, these 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 activities that come our way, these things that come into our mind, adversity, uh, confusion, frustration, depression, these kind of thoughts. It's these are coming not from God. These are coming from the enemy, and we need to take a hold of these things, and we need to we need to stop, and we need to begin to to rejoice, to celebrate in the midst of this these things that are trying to pull us down, and we need to offer up thanksgiving. And the process of doing this, we are taking these negative things, and we're turning them around into positive things. We're we're turning them into stepping stones into fulfilling God's purpose for our life. So this is the way God works. When these kind of activities come our way and these activities the, that are coming from the enemy, their intention is to destroy us. They really are. And what we need to do in those moments is stop, make a decision, begin to rejoice, begin to give thanks to God. And all of a sudden that adversity that was coming our way is turned around to be a blessing to us. God takes a hold of it through our activity of giving thanks and rejoicing, and he turns around and it'll be a, it'll be a blessing. God will use it in our lives to, to cause us to grow and to flourish. So the very, in giving thanks, the very weapon that the enemy was going to use to try to destroy us, through us giving thanks, God turns that around to be a blessing to us. He turns it around and, and that intention of the enemy is now, is faltered, and when and we begin to give thanks and we begin to prosper. Um, so as we give thanks, we are actually stopping the the very intent of the enemy to destroy. I don't know about you, but I find that tremendously powerful. Just powerful. The enemy is constantly coming at us. We need to stop at those moments. You can tell it. You begin to you begin to have, you begin to have negative thinking. You begin to wonder about yourself. You begin to have negative uh, activity going on in your brain towards other people, other brothers and sisters. We need to stop right there, and we need to get off and begin to rejoice and to give thanks. It changes our whole mindset. But what we're actually doing is we're opening the door, and we're saying, "Jesus, come into my life through humility," and He begins to rush into our lives. And he begins to change these things that the enemy meant as a weapon against us. He turns it around to be a blessing to us. So our times of worship through thanksgiving, we're setting apart this time for God. We are actually surrendering ourselves unto God in worship and saying, Lord, have your way with me. And does he, and he'll come right in and he'll begin to download into you the very purposes he has for you. And you'll be, and you'll surrender yourself to him and he'll fulfill the very things that he wants to get accomplished in you. And the Lord's Prayer says, let me down on earth as it in heaven. This is how, this is these two ammo packs of thanksgiving and rejoicing are two ways, activities that we can do by which heaven can be done on earth through us. And in doing that, we end up being altered on the inside and, and, and we end up becoming more and more like Jesus. And as a result, people end up being attracted to us. And then we begin to be an overflow of abundant life to others. Why? And we must catch us because of rejoicing and thanksgiving. So those are the first two ammo packs. And I'll be talking the next one about the third one here in, in not too long. I just want to pray with you real quick. Lord, I just ask that in Jesus' name. All of those that are listening today, Lord, you would take these two activities that I've just talked about that people would incorporate these into their lives and they would immediately see the difference by humbling themselves and giving thanks to you, by deciding to rejoice in the midst of difficult situations, that the tide gets turned in the middle of those situations. And all of a sudden, the activity, the negative things that were happening around them, which comes from the devil, is going to be stopped. And there's going to be a breakthrough in their lives because they chose to rejoice, because they chose to give thanks. And instead of destructive coming into a destructive state, they'll come into a place of celebration. They'll come into a place of victory. Not only will it help them, but it'll help all those around them. And Lord, bless everybody that's listening to this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much.